Hey everybody, it's Eric with District 82 Pinball Arcade in De Pere, Wisconsin. Um, this is part of our gameplay and tech tips uh, series. Um, Barracora, man, I, I, I got a phone call from a guy who said he had a pinball machine he wanted to sell. Um, told me about it, I was definitely interested. I went up there and took a look at it and, uh, and uh, I definitely took it home. Uh, it did not work at the time, uh, which with this particular game, um, Batteries are a big deal. Okay, it doesn't give you the adjust failure or uh, or or open the coin door or any other warning when the batteries are dead. Yeah. Um, but dead batteries and acid damage on the circuit board are a big reason this generation of game uh, you know gets tossed aside essentially. Okay, so what did I do on this game? Well, let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the back box. Um, first of all, this back glass, awesome. I mean, the back glass in this particular game usually just just is flaked out and gone and and done for um so happy the back glass is nice seven digit displays uh with the commas um uh, okay in here what did i have to do um the batteries were corroded i took them off but they did not leak down the board yet all right uh, i put in an nv ram that's a non-volatile RAM. Changed out the capacitor. I changed out this connector. Uh, changed out the 40-pin interconnect. Uh, that's really what you got to do on a lot of these games. Plus, it's also important to mount the games right. There's actually a channel that this, this is the MPU or CPU it sits into, and then the driver board cinches over it, um, and you screw everything in tight. You know, screw it in tight. It keeps the connection tight. Uh, these boards have to communicate with each other in order for it to work properly. Um, uh, the lamp driver uh, resistors, these are 5 watt um, that I put in there. I uh, changed out a couple more connectors here here um, uh, to make the uh, CPU and, and driver board communicate and work properly. Yeah. Uh, over here mm -hmm. we have a sound board. Uh, there is a slot for a speech board but there's no speech in Barracora so it's, it's not there. Um, I recapped the sound board. Uh, funny story, I got this game. And I was like, wow, I really like the sounds, but they just don't sound correct. Um, the soundboard was actually from a Joust Arcade, um, is what this one is. And I had to actually uh, burn the proper ROM and reconfigure the board to... Uh, a lot of the video games and the pinball machines use the exact same soundboards. So it actually had, like, I was like, oh, it sounds like I'm playing Joust. And I didn't, I didn't know how the game worked. And... Uh, and I didn't figure that out until I was almost done, ready to bring it here. When I was like, wow, how come when I hit that one target, like nothing happens? You know, and that's when I realized I had the wrong sound in it. Um, power supply, um, you know, I had to change out the big cap. I did not touch the high voltage caps. Uh, I changed the other caps, capacitors on it. Um, uh, this particular game, um, it looks like the, the fuses for the GI, um, man, I think I did that. <laughs> that looks like I did that. I, I mounted the fuses for the GI off to the side um, and, and separated it out so I'm not even using uh, the circuit board at all. Um, normally it would go in here and come out there, um, but I just totally bypassed it and did the four lines individually. Um, another thing that, that's uh, important on this game, that's not, but this is, you gotta fuse your back box bridge rectifiers. Um, th those two black fuses that are back here, like this one in particular, you can see it here. Um, one's for your uh, lamps or your controlled lamps and then the other one is for uh, the solenoids. Uh, if you don't fuse those, there's a scenario that could happen where um, uh, it could catch on fire. So if you fuse those, you won't, you won't have that issue. There's plenty of stuff online on how to do it. But it's an eight amp fuse that goes in that. Um, I think that's, yeah, other than a lot of the connectors and, uh, and wiring, um, that's a lot that I did back here. Also, under the play field and then LEDs. Oh yeah, a lot of times, the LEDs nowadays are so bright. Um, they do sell dimmer ones, but I typically just always buy the 2SMD uh, from Comet. Um, but they're really bright, and, and the distance between the whiteboard and the back glass is, is really narrow, okay? And then when you have the LED and it all shines all the light forward, um, you know, it can generate hot spots and stuff, but there's just so much light, I don't even put in all the light bulbs a lot of the times. 
you don't need to. I mean, you can get the lesser powerful ones and then spread it out more if you want. But if I didn't show you this, you wouldn't even know that, that not all light bulbs are in there. Uh, for the back box anyway. Okay, so let's lift up this play field. Uh, take a look underneath. Um, what's some of the stuff that I did here? Um, well, first I changed out the flippers um, from the originals to a more modern WPC style with the extension spring. Um, the key is when you do this, you know, you need a new base plate, um, you need the flipper max. You also have to use the high voltage um, end of stroke switches instead of the low voltage ones that would normally come with this uh, flipper rebuild kit. Okay, or if you buy the whole plate and everything else, they're going to send you the, the low voltage uh, end of stroke switch instead of the high voltage. So make sure that you change that out. Um, oops, looks like I still got a ball in here. I don't want it to fall. Out. Um, I know I had some switch issues on this game. I think I just changed them out. Uh, also, I did my little uh, pop bumper uh, LEDs. Um, we did a video on that a long time ago, but from the bottom side, I, I can tell because I, I cut out the lamp sockets on the pop bumpers and just wire in the lights um, directly. Uh, it also has a bell in here. Um, one of the last games of Williams to use a bell. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's show you some gameplay. This has a pretty unique rule set. Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm stepping up to this game, um, first let's put all the balls back in. All right. All right, so first of all, you got one, two, three, and four, five, six, okay? When you hit a lane up here, it's gonna light one, two, and three, okay? Or, so there's one. You can change the lane by hitting the right flipper. Okay, on this one, two, and three. The left flipper is not doing anything. Now, if you hit the ball through the same one that's actually lit up, it'll light the one below it, like that. Okay, now you see that there's one here and here. Um, and the right flipper still changes that lane, but the left flipper changes the bottom one. Okay, the only way to light a bottom light is to have the top light lit. Okay, now, so that would make that would mean that it's more difficult to light the four, five, six than it is to light the one, two, three. Okay. Now, if you light the four, five, six, it'll start lighting the bonuses over here of 20, 40, and extra ball. Whereas you do the one, two, three, it lights to 30, 60, 90. Now, the difference is when you collect this 20, 40 extra ball, it doesn't go away. So, so you hit this 20, and you collect the 20, um, it'll stay. And you can keep collecting it over and over again. Whereas you get one, two, three, it lights this 30, you can collect it one time, and then it's gone, and you gotta spell one, two, three again. Okay, so you can figure it out for yourself. You know which one's more valuable to do. Um, okay. So the 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 cool part about this game is the multi-ball. You want to spell bar, and then a cora, but you have to do it in order. Okay. So if you hit the target out of order, you gotta start with the B here. It doesn't give it to you. Okay. Similar to like Alien Poker, um, but you, so you got to hit these all in order. Once you hit them in order, it lights your lock here. Okay, you lock this ball in. All right, it kicks this ball out, of play, out in play, and it gives you a two-ball multi-ball. Once you hit your first switch. Okay. Now that's pretty, you know, that's, that's neat. And he's got these twos going across the thing here um, for uh, for double scoring. So as long as you got two balls, remember this was 20,000 points before, now it's 40,000 points every time you hit it because you're in double scoring. You lose the ball, uh, it goes back to single scoring. Okay, now, okay, that's cool. But what's this Acora over here? Well, if you hit the Acora down, it's gonna light the hole up top. So now you can lock a ball up here this one's not lit, but, but now that you have a ball up there, when you hit your first switch, it does not release that ball, okay, like it did from the other one. So you can still spell bar, lock that one, and get a three ball multi-ball, all right, but you can keep playing the game and, and, and having fun while that ball's sitting up there. Now, this is 1981, all right. Modern games have a ball save and stuff. This, you know, this game doesn't really do that. But it does have this feature where if you lose this ball, it's going to kick this one back into play. 
on your same ball, and there you go. And now you can keep playing the game um, almost like its own ball save. So basically, it's kind of like a built-in ball save from a game from 1981. So if you got a ball up there, like now it's, it's just going to kick it back into play. But if you spell that a core up, you kick it back up there, it's kind of like your built-in uh, ball save. All right? Otherwise, you can go for the bar, like the lock here. All right, and then once you uh, launch the next ball and hit your first switch, it'll put a three ball multi-ball into play and all your scores are triple, okay? So now everything's triple the value. Instead of, and then you lose one, it goes back to double, you lose another one, it goes back to single, okay? Now there are these switches right here um, that are also valuable when you do this little loop right here, okay? Um, which is another another aspect of the game. But when I'm playing it, I'm usually going for the bar, a core up, you know, lock the ball, get the multi-ball, hit a bunch of switches, and have fun. Um, that's about it. I, uh, you know, I put some spotlights on this game to kind of light it up. Um, the play field, I'd say, is above average. Um, you know, not mint. Um, but uh, it is the original play field on the game. And, uh, oh, I do, I do have plastic protectors that I purchased on this particular one. That's why they're all nice um, uh, and they actually fit the game. Um, so a plastic protector is just a flat piece of Lexan that goes underneath the plastic. A lot of games don't make them. I usually cut them out uh, myself, but this particular game had some uh, out there on the internet, so I bought them. Um, but that is, uh, that is Barracora, 1981 Williams, uh, at District 82 Pinball in De Pere, Wisconsin.